All right, I'm gonna sit down here and record this a third time. Hopefully the third time's the charm. <laughs> Let's see here, though. Hey, brothers and sisters, God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. You know, the enemy just does not want this news update getting out for some reason. I mean, this is my third time sitting down here and recording this. First time, my phone messed up. Second time, I didn't like the quality of it. So, this third time, we'll see how this goes. Uh, this will be your world news update for the 14th of August. 2020. I've got five articles to go over here, so I'm not going to waste any time. I'm just going to get right into the news update. Developing situation. Earthquake swarm under the Salton Sea increases the chances of a larger quake over the next seven days. Now, be mindful, this was posted on the 12th. So, at this current point on the 14th, it would really be over the next five days. Uh, so, we'll now read this article. The USGS issued a warning that an ongoing swarm of minor earthquakes is taking place underneath the Salton Sea and has increased the possibility of an even stronger and larger event due to its close proximity to the San Andreas fault line. The dozens of minor quakes have ranged from a magnitude 2.0 to a magnitude 4.6 and have shaken the Salton Sea region. The swarm was centered around 8 miles from the southern end of the San Andreas fault line. This isn't the first quake swarm for this region as others were recorded back in 2001, 2009, and 2016 respectively, according to the USGS. It remained active usually up to 20 days with the average duration of about one week. However, the USGS is warning that there is an 80% chance that the earthquakes will continue but will decrease, and none of them will exceed a magnitude of 5.4 within the next seven days, or in this case, the next five days. However, they want to be clear that there is also a 19% chance of a bigger earthquake, anywhere from a magnitude of 5.5 to a magnitude of 6.9. And in the least likely scenario, there is a, still a 1% chance of a magnitude 7, excuse me, or higher earthquake within the next five to seven days. So that is the first article in regards to earthquakes. Second article, this one once again, just like the first one, off of endtimeheadlines.org. This is still an ongoing developing situation right now. Uh, France has deployed the Navy to the Eastern Mediterranean amid tensions between Greece and Turkey. There is a standoff going on there between Greece and Turkey. France has just deployed its navy to the eastern Mediterranean region amid tensions between Greece and Turkey. The report is indicating that the French Defense Ministry has confirmed that it had sent two Rafale fighter jets and two navy ships, including a helicopter carrier, to the eastern Mediterranean region. Quote, the purpose of this military presence is to strengthen the autonomous assessment of the situation and to affirm France's commitment to free movement, to the security of maritime navigation in the Mediterranean region, and respect for international law. And that was according to the French Defense Ministry's statement. Reuter is reporting that the convoy had, had uh, arrived in Crete earlier on Thursday and had carried out joint maneuvers with Greek forces. This deployment follows uh, you know, French President Emmanuel Macron's bitter regional struggle with Turkey and announced his decision to temporarily strengthen the French military presence in the eastern Mediterranean. That is the second article. Just be watchful of tensions going on over there because I feel like that entire region's just become a powder keg. It's just ready to explode at any moment. So be keeping your eyes on that side of the world for all the various tensions going on there. Third article, once again, endtimeheadlines.org. Millions of acres of crops in the central United States have been destroyed by a series of historic natural disasters. While the mainstream media focuses on the upcoming election, COVID-19, and the endless protests going on in our major cities, another great tragedy is unfolding all across the middle of the country. A nightmarish drought, horrific flooding across the Mississippi River, and a giant derecho storm that just hit the farm belt have combined to make this one of the toughest years ever recorded for farmers. And this comes at a particularly bad time because of the stress that the COVID-19 pandemic has put on the food distribution systems. It's already caused periodic shortages of certain items around the nation, and now it's just making that even worse. We definitely could have used an uneventful growing season this year, but unfortunately, it's not what we got. On Monday, an absolutely massive derecho storm roared through the Midwest. According to USA Today, the storm had peak winds of up to 112 miles per hour. The storm had winds of up to 112 miles an hour near Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where there was widespread damage reported. 
And keep in mind, 112 mile per hour wind speeds, that's as powerful as an inland hurricane or an EF2 tornado. And that's as it tore from eastern Nebraska all the way through Iowa and parts of Wisconsin, Indiana, and Illinois, including Chicago and its suburbs, where there was at one point five to six tornado warnings issued within that region of Chicago. Most hurricanes don't have wind speeds that high once they finally reach shore. And I know I've never personally experienced wind speeds of such magnitude. Needless to say, this very unusual storm caused immense devastation. According to the Iowa governor, Kim Reynolds, approximately 10 million acres of crops were destroyed in just Iowa. Early estimates say the derecho flattened at least one-third of Iowa's crops, which equals roughly about 10 million acres, according to the Iowa governor, Kim Reynolds. In addition, tens of millions of bushels of grain that were stored at co-ops and on farms were, were, were damaged excuse me, or destroyed as bins blew away. And it also rocked a town in Iowa by the name of Marshalltown. That town name in Iowa might sound familiar because an EF3 tornado destroyed that town's business district just two years ago. With winds of 99 miles per hour, Monday storm damaged some businesses that had just recently recovered, even damaging the scaffolding being used to repair the historic courthouse dome. So that's what's going on there with all these natural disasters kind of combining up and causing widespread damage and destruction to crops. So that is the third article. Now we'll move on to the fourth article. Once again, endtimeheadlines.org. I believe, yes, that's where I've gotten all five articles here. Three volcano tectonic earthquakes rock Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines within 24 hours. Again, this was posted back on the 12th. Three volcano tectonic earthquakes were recorded at Zambales province within the last 24 hours, and we all know that Mount Pinatubo is the only active volcano in this province. So, is it preparing its next big blast? A magnitude 4.4 earthquake first struck 16 kilometers northeast of Olangapo City at a depth of around 10 kilometers. The first quake was followed by a magnitude 3.2 quake in that same area, approximately 12 kilometers northeast of Olangapo City at a depth of around 6 kilometers. Finally, the last 4.3 earthquake occurred on August 12, 2020 at 1047 a.m. local time in the Philippines, around 13 kilometers southeast of Olangapo City, Zambales, at a depth of 9 kilometers. A, vo a volcano tectonic earthquake is a tremor caused by the movement of magma between the surface of the earth. The movement results in pressure changes where the rock around the magma can experience stress. And at some point, this stress can cause the rock to break or move. This seismic activity is used by scientists to monitor volcanoes. So is Pinatubo preparing for the next eruption? Not according to you know, officials within the Philippines near that area. They're saying Mount Pinatubo remains at an alert level of zero, which means that there's so far no threat, right? No irregularity in its current state, and thus there's no sign of an incoming eruption. But it's definitely worth keeping your eyes on. I'd be curious to see if the if the government officials within the Philippines raise the alert level of that particular volcano. Last article here. Again, endtimeheadlines.org. China quarantines region while the second case of bubonic plague was diagnosed here in the states of New Mexico. Excuse me. While the World Health Organization declares that there's nothing to worry about, China is sealing off entire villages. And a man, you know, after a man died in New Mexico from a rare form of the plague that once killed off half the world's population, China's just kicking in high gear. They they are making a huge deal about a case of the bubonic plague being discovered in the United States. So, meanwhile, this wasn't from something that happened in their country. This is this is an escalation they made after the disease was found here in the States and it killed somebody. So anyways, back to the article. China sealed off several villages in Inner Mongolia in a second attempt to contain the spread of a new outbreak of the bubonic plague. A man died in the region's city of Bayaner from multiple organ fa failure after contracting the disease. Authorities in Bayaner said, quote, the place of residence of the deceased is locked down and a comprehensive uh, investigation is being carried out as to, you know, how he contracted the disease, cause of death, etc. Because they know he died from multiple organ failure, but they're launching an investigation deeper into that. 35 contacts of the man have been sent into quarantine, so that tells me they're doing contact tracing. Statement added, quote, currently there is a risk of the human plague spreading in our city. And that is according to quotes within the Bay Inner City within China. 
Last Thursday, another person died from circulatory system failure due to infection with the bubonic plague. The World Health Organization, I would not trust them if I were you. Uh, they are not reliable at all, but, you know, again, I'll report on it because it's in the article. They say that they're carefully monitoring, carefully monitoring a case of bubonic plague in China's northern Inner Mongolia region, but says that it's not high risk. In a seemingly unrelated case, a man in his 20s died of the bubonic plague in New Mexico here in the States last week. This was the second case of the plague in New Mexico after a man in his 60s was diagnosed with the bubonic plague in New Mexico's Santa Fe County last month. So the bubonic plague is the rarest of the, of the three plague varieties, which include bubonic plague. Uh, and they broke this down further. Septicosemic plague? I guess This has been the one that's been the most fatal, and it's also the rarest of the three. And it can also affect rodents, wildlife, and pets. So that is the update there. Excuse me. I'm still, like, kind of trying to wake up, so <laughs> I figured I'd get on here, give you all those five articles, and then, um, you know what, I'll probably just go ahead and give you all the gospel and head out. Uh, be be watchful for episode seven of Love Talk to drop. All I gotta do is record and upload that sucker. It'll likely be later, but I will get into the gospel right now. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That's the gospel, the good news. That is what saves you if you believe that in your heart. Christ died for all of your sins, past, present, and future. That's why he died. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving he was dead, and he rose from death on the third day, according to the scriptures. Why? For our justification. We are justified, saved, by faith alone in, in Christ's finished redemptive work on the cross alone. This ties in with John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Right? It all comes back around to believing in Christ alone. There's no amount of good works that you can ever do that'll get your way into the kingdom of heaven. Right? Because heaven comes with salvation. Salvation is by believing. Right? It's not about our works. It's about our faith in his finished redemptive work alone. I'm going to go to the book of Ephesians here, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, two of my go-to verses. For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Please believe on Christ, you guys. Time is so short. We're continuing to see all these world news events occur, and it's only going to ramp up in intensity and frequency, right? That's why Jesus likened them to birth pangs upon a pregnant woman, right? When there's a woman, when there's a woman who's pregnant... Right? She experiences what? Contractions, right? And they increase in intensity and frequency until labor, which leads to the birth of the child. Well, in that same way, all these various world news events and prophetic events are going to continue to increase in both intensity and frequency, not only until we get raptured, but they'll further increase as they go into the tribulation period all the way up to the second coming of Christ. Right? So it's important to remember that. All right? So please, if you have not become a believer... I would encourage you to do so, because that's all you have to do to be saved, is just believing, right? Nothing more on top of that, just believe that what Christ did on the cross was enough, right? Don't try to trust and rely on yourself and your own good works. Trust on Christ alone, okay? And the moment you do that, you're not only saved, but you're indwelled with the Holy Spirit, whereby you're actually sealed with it and sanctified until the day of redemption. I'm going to read that. Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Once you're sealed, you're not going to be unsealed. right? Once born again, you're not going to be unborn, then born again again. You're saved and sealed forever. right? The day of redemption is the rapture. That's when you get raptured up to be with our Savior and get your glorified bodies. And you want that, don't you? Just believe on Christ. It really is not difficult whatsoever. Nothing you ever do will ever be strong enough to break God's seal right? You will never lose your salvation, so do not listen to anyone who tells you otherwise. So that'll conclude this news update. I will see you guys later on for Love Talk, should the Lord Terry is coming, of course. Otherwise, God bless.